That was incredible. What's up, everybody? It's the girl Otaku here, and I think this is my favorite episode so far this season. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Attack on Titan Season 3, Episode 5, so let's get started. Erwin's plan to overthrow the government could not have gone any better. When asked for his last words, Erwin plants a seed in the minds of the government officials present at this meeting and takes a gamble hoping that they make themselves look bad in front of the other soldiers and leaders. Everything Erwin said was true. If Wall Rose was breached, and honestly, I kind of figured it would have happened by now, everyone would be screwed. Those living inside Wall Rose currently are already struggling immensely, and another blow like that to humanity would be detrimental. I thought the music was very well placed in this scene, and it complemented Erwin's intensity well, and he is unwavering here, like the fierce leader he is. I was not disappointed with this scene at all. When this girl came barging in crying wall breach, I mean... Obviously, there wasn't. This was clearly part of the plan, and as I was getting ready to review this episode, I thought to myself, there was no way that anyone actually believed that. In order to check my theory, I tortured myself with a few reaction videos, and you know what? <laughs> People actually believed it. Ah, well. But yeah, the plan was a huge success. I was actually pretty impressed with Pixis during all this, too. His acting was on point, and I learned a little bit about him as a person as well in this episode. He states that in the case that the current government did all they could with humanity's best interests in mind and acting to save the most lives, that he would be fine sending Erwin to the gallows. That's not something that I had expected from him, though it's not too surprising coming from a man in his position of power. I guess the only thing that kind of bothered me about this trial scene was the fact that you can see Fritz the fake in the background in almost every shot just like, why? Truthfully, I don't remember Premier Zachary at all, though when he says he would have tried a coup d'etat anyway before he died, I thought that was icing on top of the cake. However, he did say something that didn't sit right with me at all. He said Erwin values himself more than the fate of humanity, and I was practically screaming at this man. I mean, of course, Erwin didn't want to die, but are you forgetting what he did last season? I said it first, God damn it! Erwin's right in front of you! Do not falter! Fuck Premier Zachary, dude. Hanji shares information Erwin had on the Reese land. Now, her talking about Frida can't be a coincidence. Okay, like, Reese had five kids, and I know when it comes to royal families, the eldest children usually get the most attention, but there has to be another reason this information was given to us in this way. There were definitely no bandits, first of all. Why would people raid a chapel, of all places? And secondly, I think the leader of the land you live on would be a little more valuable than anything you could find in a chapel. Some shady things definitely went down that day while Maria fell, and what I'm curious about is whether or not Rod meant for things to happen that way. I'd hate to think this man murdered his whole family in cold blood, so for now, I'm sticking with something went wrong and it was an accident. So the scouts are free for right now, they don't have to worry about the interior police coming after them, but Kenny and his people are still around, so they're not out of the woods yet. Now it's time to find Aaron and Historia, so... <clears throat> uh... Found him. Something Armin said really caught my attention, and I don't know why I didn't think of this a little bit sooner, but who did Aaron eat to get his power? I want to believe that he didn't eat anyone, and that there's another way to inherit it, like if you have some of a Titan Shifter's blood or something. You know how, like in Naruto, if you get your hands on some Hashirama DNA, you get all these power-ups? I'm thinking it's kind of something like that. So this place Aaron is being held is actually really pretty. The ore was a result of some titan power. I have no idea what that is, but it's very appealing to the eye. I kind of wonder if it's like really strong and it can't be broken because this cave-like area underground would be perfect for experimenting on titans. As I said earlier, this episode slid into the favorite spot for me, and I think the reason is because the way it was sequenced and how each scene just got better and better, it was amazing to watch. Usually I get distracted when watching something and I have to go back or rewatch the episode a few times to get everything that's going on, but that didn't happen. This episode held my attention the entire time. In the preview for next week's episode, it says Levi, Mikasa, and everyone else are heading to the chapel. Personally, I don't understand why Reese would rebuild the chapel above ground when this is hiding underneath. To me, it seems like you would want to leave it destroyed so nobody would want to go near it but, you know, what do I know? We also see Aaron's father, and we will learn of his unforgivable sin. I have to wonder who that's aimed at. Is it unforgivable to Aaron, Lord Reese, humanity as a whole? I guess we'll find out next week. I think it's fairly obvious that Reese wants Historia to eat Aaron and gain his power, but I really don't think she would do it. There's not a chance. We know Kenny and Levi are going to face off soon, so that's something to look forward to. 
I do think, though, that episode six will be backstory centric about kind of the origin of the Titans and the powers. And as long as I learn what Grisha did and what happened to him, I'll be satisfied. That's all I have on this episode. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, let me know why in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.